<laughs> um, so yeah, I don't have t-shirts uh, to give out today, so no questions. No, you're welcome to, uh, to my questions anyway. Um, so, okay, I'm going to talk about uh, Quiz University. Um, we started to create this uh, distribution of quiz based on some problems that we found and we have when teaching uh, object-oriented. There are some challenges, you know, when you have to teach object-oriented programming. We all know them, but most of them are related to uh, which class should I use? There are so many classes. Which collection should I take and, and use? Or uh, should I class? Or should this as an instance? I, I remember the first time I read about C++. That was my first uh, encounter with object-oriented. Well, OK. Yeah, uh, with something related to object-oriented programming. And I, I couldn't understand what a class was. It was very difficult for me to, to realize what a class was. Uh, also, there are questions like, uh, should I subclass or not? And of course, there are also questions related with, if you're using a small talk to teach objects, uh, object-oriented programming, things like, uh, where is the code? How do I share the code? Because, you know, the guys are used to use uh, uh, files and editors and all those kind of things. And the worst one is, oh, my email crashed. <laughs> what happened with all the changes that I made? So, those are a lot of the uh, things that we usually, questions and, and problems we usually have when we're teaching object-oriented programming with small talk. So um, this year, as I said yesterday, I decided to make an experiment and change uh, from file to quiz. Uh, and this was an experiment and so far it's working really good, very, very good. Um, what is quiz? Well, um, Juan presented yesterday really fast. But uh, the advantages that I saw uh, with quiz is, first of all, it's very small. Not too many classes. That's very important for the kids to, you know, when they start to, to play around with the, uh, with the system. It's, very, it's, it's better if you don't have that many classes. I remember when I learned a small talk, it was with the small talk five. And I could see all the, the, the classes. I could understand everything because there weren't so many. Also, the UI is very fast. The response is immediately. Uh, it's very stable. It's not uh, common for you to have a problem with quiz. Um, uh, we use a very simple sharing uh, mechanism, code sharing. It's just file out GitHub, and that's all. So that allows us not to spend a lot of time explaining uh, Monticello or MV or whatever. Um, one, that is, one thing that is very important when you're starting also is uh, the ability to navigate from the tools, from the UI to the model. That's something that we show and that we encourage in our classes uh, to do. And also it supports uh, 32, 64 bits on Mac, Windows, and Linux. Uh, it's also interesting to see that Quiz is very appropriable. So it's something that you can make it as your own. It's very easy to make changes and to have your own distribution as we did. Uh, so Quiz University is a special distribution of Quiz that uh, has a dedicated website to download the uh, distribution. Uh, it has support in Spanish. That's also very important. We always encourage the students to uh, subscribe to the mailing list and everything. They never do it. And if they do it, they never ask because it's in English. And so they get scared and whatever. So we have one in Spanish, and that helps a lot for them to make questions. Uh, we created a simpler installation than the one that Quiz has. And it comes with some pre-compiled packages. Like Aconcagua, Shell 10, the refactoring sun. The most important one I want to show today is the notative objects. So what's Aconcagua? <coughs> Uh, Concagua is, uh, as you know, the tallest uh, mountain in the whole American continent, uh, North America, South America, and Central America. And, uh, but also it's uh, a framework that we built a long time ago to work with uh, measurements. That's something that we encouraged from the beginning, at least in, at my classes, uh, to, uh, for the students not to think only in terms of numbers, but also in terms of measures. So, for example, you can do one meter plus 100 centimeters, and of course it's going to give you two meters, 
or if I want to go from one kilometer to 20 kilometers, but 200 meters, uh, and you want to convert that distance um, to millimeters, you get all the millimeters in that interval. Uh, or, and of course, it's not only um, uh, related with distance, also you can do it for time, like uh, 10 days plus 35 minutes, give me that in seconds, uh, or one year plus six months, or whatever. Uh, also, temperature, 32 Fahrenheit to Kelvin, and you can do nice stuff like this one. This is the final speed uh, formula, where you have that initial speed, acceleration, and the final speed. So in this case, uh, if you do this, it gets uh, 100,000 meters per second. Uh, and of course, if, it's, if you rate, if your, if your rate is $1 per minute, uh, after one hour, you will make $60. Okay? So this is, uh, it's, uh, the idea is uh, for the students to start thinking about measurements and not only numbers, that that's all the support that you usually have in most uh, languages. Um, the other uh, package is Chalten. It's also, it's a place in Patagonia. It has a very nice, a very difficult to claim mountain, uh, where, you know, people that claim, claim, is it right, the right word? Yeah, uh, climb, yeah, uh, climb. <laughs> and they claim the mountain. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, to work with uh, 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 dates. Uh, it has different versions than what I'm showing here is one it's only for the uh, Gregorian calendar, and it has a very nice uh, way to express dates. For example, here you say November 10th, 2017, and it gives you November 10th, 2017, and yes, this, that's a small talk code, not special syntax. So if you want to know the day since uh, the byte publication in the 81, you just say uh, August 1st, I don't know the date, the real day, it was published, but let's say August, uh, August 1st, uh, 1981, distance to today, and it will give you 13,250 days. Of course, if you want that in seconds, is uh, that amount of seconds. Uh, and also, there is, there, uh, you have uh, abstractions for different types of uh, points in the timeline. So it's not only date and date time, but also, for example, month of year, like August uh, 1981 on November 2017. Yeah, though there are 435 months between those two months of year. Uh, and also, for example, uh, uh, day of month, like December 25th or January 1st, and so on. So it's uh, an interesting uh, framework for, uh, to work with dates. And it's based on Agonkawa, and that makes it uh, usual, and you know, everything fits together. Uh, it comes with the refactorings. I showed that yesterday a little bit. Uh, maybe one, one thing I forgot to mention yesterday is that uh, because we are redoing refactorings, sometimes we think, uh, at least I thought, some different ways of doing them. Uh, for example, if you rename a method, uh, it will ask you, okay, what's the new selector? And then it will ask you, what's the scope of the rename? Uh, class, hierarchy, category, hierarchy and its categories, or the whole system, uh, let's say class. And then it will ask you, okay, which ones do you want to rename? Uh, what are the senders? And you can remove, add, whatever, and then do the rename. So it's, um, I don't know, it, it, this, uh, we are kind of rethinking the whole rename uh, that we have for free since a long time ago. So it's, uh, also that's an interesting uh, part of this experiment. Uh, we have, uh, it's uh, also important uh, when we teach objects to, um, for us it's important to, for, for the kids to do TDD because that's a very, um, it has many advantages. One of them is that you have immediate feedback of what you're doing. The other one, that I see that is very important is that it gives you a process of working. And if you have that process, you can start reflecting and thinking about that process, how much time it takes you each step, and how, why 
is uh, you know writing a test taking you so long so if it takes you so too much time maybe it's because you are writing the wrong test or maybe it's because the design of what you're testing is not good so we encourage that kind of thinking and that makes i i believe i it helps a lot when you program that way so uh like i i showed yesterday um you can just press uh Command T and accepts the method and run the test. If the test fails, it will bring up the debugger. If it runs, it runs all the tests on the suite and you know do those things. And of course, uh, the um, uh, let's see, uh, not this one. Um, you can also um, start debugging uh, directly, and it you know brings the debugger. Well, this is common in other small talks too. Uh, and of course, if you are in the category, it runs all the tests of the category or all the tests of the class and whatever. <clears throat> oh, this is one uh, very important tool. Uh, sometimes the image crash or the VM crash or whatever. It's very common when uh, students are starting because they don't know how to use Smalltalk. So they do crazy stuff. They press in keys that you as small talker would never press or they you know start playing or it's very common to enter in a loop and you know in a small talk you don't have a stack overflow that you know depends on the distribution but for example in far or in quiz it's like a roof it start running and it never ends and they go like crazy what's going on so they kill the vm and okay what happened with the changes so what we did is uh let me kill the vm uh, I made a change. The, the rename was a change. Yes, uh, remember uh, before uh, I will do it again. Uh, yeah, before it was no. Um, yeah, let's put here one. Okay, so I saved the method, but now I will kill the VM. <laughs> Where is it? Oh, here you go. <clears throat> and now I will restart it. I think it's this one. Uh, what happened? What? <laughs> this one, yes. Okay. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> it's all, it has to happen when you are doing a demo. This one, yeah. Chong. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what's going on. Um, and that was the. Uh, okay. Um, uh, let's see this one. Last time you open a server, it was open again. Yeah, reopen. I don't know. Reopen. This is the first time it happened to me. <laughs> Wait. Should I try another image? Whoa, shit. So there's something wrong with the image. Whoa. Um, okay, let's see. Okay. I don't know what, what I did wrong. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's the first time it happens to me. Uh, uh, mm, okay, I'm not going to show it, just in case. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> what it does when you kill the image, uh, kill the VM and you restart the image, it will recognize that there are changes that were not saved 
and it will tell you if you want to restore them automatically or by hand. And the nice thing about it is that if you were playing with the debugger or, or the inspector and doing do it, sending messages to self or whatever, that could you know generate some message not understood errors, those are filtered. Yeah, the, the, the student don't see them and it recovers all the changes. Okay, and now the, the most important part is um, uh, we created a, a special, uh, let's say, tool to work with objects without classes. We start teaching objects just with objects, no classes, to avoid that, uh, you know, cognitive uh, problem at the beginning. Uh, so the idea is to help learning object oriented with direct object manipulation uh, to avoid this class instance uh, differentiation at the beginning, uh, but also to reinforce modeling and encapsulation and cohesion while doing this. Uh, and one of the objectives we, we had when, when we started doing this tool was to be able to use the tools as, possible, as similar as possible as the, and any small top tool. So the browser, the inspector, the debugger should be the same to uh, facilitate the transition for, from uh, you know, objects to classes and then from the tools that you use with this uh, tool that we call denotative objects to common small talk tools. Uh, and of course, one of the important uh, objectives is to be able to debug and inspect from the beginning. And what I'm saying is, because there are many tools to work only with objects. There is one tool created by the University, uh, Te La Universidad Tecnológica Nacional, the UTN, here in Argentina, that is called Osono. Uh, Maximo Prieto was using that uh, tool, but they couldn't debug, they couldn't inspect, and the, the, the tool was different. So changing from Osono to uh, real small talk was a problem for the students. Um, and he told me that, he felt that he, he wanted to finish that part of the class very quickly because it was a pain. Um, so, uh, and of course, we could use also self. In self, you have direct object manipulation or whatever, but then there is another set of tools, another kind of different language and so on. So that's why we decided let's try and see what happens if we create this special tool. And it was pretty easy because uh, I mean, you can have objects and simulate them without classes using anonymous classes or something like that. But I, I, I remember I told to Maximo, oh, but we have classes. Classes are unique. We don't have to do anything special in the meta model to work with objects. Uh, if you don't see that they are classes, then you are directly working with them. So uh, that's what we did. Um, and we call it the notative object, but it was a Maximus name idea, uh, because in linguistic, uh, something that is denotative is uh, the notation of a word is its explicit definition as listed in the dictionary. Okay? Because what other name, how, how can you call a tool that makes you work with objects? Object. Object tool. <laughs> so, uh, because those names are already taken, we decided to use this one. Um, so, uh, what, are the, uh, what are the tools? Well, the, the, the browser, as you can see, is very similar to the Smalltalk browser, but there is no class instance uh, button here. Uh, the categories are automatically created when you create an object that has a special category. Uh, you have only objects, um, and you can play with them directly and also there is a workspace here that allows you to play with them. So, for example, I'm here on number zero. This is a representation of integers, kind of a piano. And I can see factorial, in factorial returns one. And the good thing is, again, I have all these shortcuts that allows me, for example, to send the message and get the immediate result. Okay. That's one, yes? Uh, a nice thing about the inspectors is that once you have one, the next time you get one, you get the same inspector. So it's not different inspector per, uh, ob uh, for the same object, it's the same inspector. <clears throat> yes? Uh, 
And also, if the message is expecting a collaborator, uh, it will ask you, of course, you want to add what? The, I want to add two to zero, it will give me two, okay? And all those kind of things. Uh, reference to objects are direct because they are public. And here is uh, the workspace where you can play with the stuff. Um, I don't know, three factorial, yeah? Greater than four of six. <laughs> That's a generalization. generalization. <laughs> um, so it allows you to, to do nice stuff. For example, this is a, a representation of a traffic light on the 5th Avenue and 9th Avenue, 9th Street. Of course, we don't use that, those names here in Argentina, just rename them. <laughs> but uh, what you can do is, for example, you can open um, a representation of it. Uh, also, you can inspect it. And from here, I can send the message, uh, turn on, and it will start working. And that's uh, something that the guys have to do. It's just uh, an assignment, at least in the class I teach. Um, of course, I can say turn off. <clears throat> and it will turn off when it ends all the cycle. Um, what else? Um, as I say, the, the, well, I didn't say it, uh, the menus are very simple. Uh, to share code is just file in, file out. Um, you can create the objects from here, or you can also create uh, an object using this kind of object builder. Uh, yes, and we created also a way to share code we created this kind of uh, parent-child relationship, so I can uh, create, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, <coughs> a style of Marcos. <laughs> yes, uh, and you can share uh, as if it was, uh, you know, a subclass kind of, um, relationship, but if you want to um, use uh, the implementation of the parent class instead of sending a message to super, because, well, now it, 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 will, it won't compile, okay? It's not showing that there is a mistake when you type, but uh, if you want this to work, you have to send a message to parent. So we change, we change super with parent. Uh, I get one in this case. And we also created a way to do delegation without a special keyword. We can, you can send the message delegate to parent, and that will send the message directly to the parent. Okay? Or you can say delegate, well, M2, and let's say M2 returns 10. <coughs> So it will return time. Yes, uh, the, we have also this way of, uh, we are experimenting with uh, the idea of sharing. We don't know if it's better to have a special keyboard or a uh, keyword or just use uh, messages as uh, this delegate and delegate to parent. So what else? Um, well, as I said, uh, something that is very important, very... So, when, when you work with objects like this, where are the tests? Uh, who, you know, where do you write the test? So, uh, that's an interesting question. So, we decided that you can create a test anywhere in any object and uh, do an assertion that one is equal to zero plus one. Yes, and here, if you press a common T, it will not only run the method, but also run it, run it as a test, because it starts with the test uh, keyword, and, well, it will work. And, uh, but also, you could have your special uh, test classes. It, it depends on how you want to, uh, you know, organize your code. So maybe at the beginning, you will start with the test on the same objects and then move them to another object when you're done. Uh, that's up to the users. Um, buh, buh, buh. Oh, we created an assertion. Uh, 
uh, object because it was pretty interesting to make this run as, as unit. Uh, I'm not, I don't have time to tell you how we did it, but uh, we create this assertion uh, object using the same um, framework. So it was an iterative kind of circular definition. It was pretty interesting, pretty cool. Um, and something very important, as I said before, we wanted to have the same uh, tools. Something that is very important is the debugger. We want kids, you know, students to start debugging from the beginning. And of course, we had to change the debugger to uh, simplify that. So let's say uh, it's interesting. Let me remove this. Let's say I have this method. Uh, I'm going to debug it. So, uh, as you can see, the, the uh, well, I don't know if you can see that, but there are less buttons. And when you go press into, it will go only into if the object, the receiver of the message, is a denotative object. For example, now 10 factorial, if I say into, it won't go into that implementation. It won't go into the select, if I say into, but it will go into the block and as you can see here there is no uh, you cannot see the implementation of the select message uh, you only see what is related with the not the objects and that allows us to avoid some complexity to explain some complexity at the beginning but uh, it allows the the students to still use a select or a do or whatever of course if i do over it will let me know that uh, it's not understood. I can create that message and, I don't know, return a small integer odd. And, uh, oh, I did proceed. But anyway, so. Um, so that the, the debugger helps a lot to avoid all extra complexity and see only what you need to, to, to do for the project that you're working on. Um, last thing, how much time do I have? I'm over? I'm done? Okay, so um, we also create a, an idea of replicants. We use the metaphor of the replicant of the uh, Blade Runner movie. And that's kind of like uh, having like an instance, a different instance of the same object. It's a replicant. Uh, it's different from cloning because it allows you to change the uh, original replicant and that, um, that, that change impacts on all the replicants of the original replicant. And that allow, that allow us, for example, to create a, a list recursively, uh, an implementation of lists and different collections using only objects uh, this way. Um, okay, so what we achieve, concrete object manipulation, immediate feedbacks, uh, I, we saw that the students understand that way a little bit better how objects work and it's easier for them to then work with classes. Uh, the migration from the narrative tools to the small talk tools is immediately, it's immediate, it's no problem, no, no friction. Uh, they inspect and debug from day one. That's something that was very important for us. And we did this in 90, uh, 49 hours. It took me 49 hours to do the implementation. So it's uh, a good uh, um, example on the simplicity and, uh, of quiz. So, okay, that's all. I don't know if we have time for questions. Yeah. Yes, we have time. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I would like to understand better the curriculum. So, for, uh, it, how long uh, are the students uh, doing this? And then, if they go to full small talk or yes. the traditional one? Yeah, in uh, Kilmes, in the University of Kilmes, maybe Nahuel can tell you that better. I don't know. Yeah. Nice to use. So we try to 
And, and in the University of Buenos Aires, one month to, under, you know, to work with the notative objects and get used to all these things. So, and, and then after that, we go to class. And you already have a conclusion that this is a better interaction. Than yeah, yeah. It, it's, I mean, I don't have exact proof, but what I see is that they understand uh, easier, in an easier way, you know, the, the paradigm. Yeah, yeah. And, and having the same tools also helps a lot. Almost the same tools. Yeah. That helps a lot. Yes? Uh, there is one trace of the class that you couldn't remove in this implementation. It's the public name. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things that we have in the future work. Yeah, because the, the name of the object is uh, the name of the class, so it's an uppercase, uh, uppercase name, yeah. That's to any value without the need we always have to know who knows who. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, for example, here, if, if, you, if you see the implementation of the traffic light, um, the, um, let's see, the Fifth Avenue traffic regulator, uh, the signals, the advanced signal is directly uh, referenced to the object. So this message is not even necessary. But uh, I did it because the prototypical implementation, the one that used uh, prototypes, uh, then you can see that the regulator, uh, the advanced signal, it returns a collaborator that you initialize with a replicant. But uh, yeah, that's something. Okay, I, I'm not having, not taking more questions.